Part 1 of this video demonstrates endotracheal intubation and the responsibilities of both the intubator and the assistant. Part 2 of this video demonstrates use of the tracheal aspirator, also called a meconium aspirator. The assistant has many tasks before, during, and after intubation. Assembling supplies should be done prior to the birth if intubation seems likely. Choose the correct size endotracheal tube. You may want to post this chart from the textbook or keep it with your airway supplies. These items should be within reach. Stylet, endotracheal tube, laryngoscope blade, laryngoscope handle, tape or securing device, stethoscope, CO2 detector, and measuring tape. If the intubator will use a stylet, Insert it, but leave the tube in the package where it will stay clean. A stylet provides rigidity and curvature for placement. Ensure that the tip does not protrude beyond the end of the tube. Make sure the stylet can be removed easily. Use a size 1 Miller blade. If the light is dim or flickering, replace the batteries or bulb. Place the laryngoscope on the operator's left side. Occlude the suction tubing and set the suction between 80 to 100 millimeters mercury. Connect a 10 or 12 French suction catheter. Make sure the PPV device is present and functional. This team is using the T-piece resuscitator. The assistant makes sure the baby's head is in sniffing position and aligns the baby's body. The assistant monitors the heart rate and monitors oxygen saturation if pulse oximetry is working. The assistant also monitors the time and announces when the intubation attempt has exceeded 30 seconds. The assistant places the suction catheter into the operator's hand if requested and applies suction. The operator should never have to look away from anatomic landmarks. If requested, the assistant applies cricoid pressure by using the thumb and the first finger and pressing gently on the cricoid cartilage downward and toward the baby's right ear. When asked, the assistant hands the ET tube to the operator in insertion position. After insertion, the assistant removes the stylet and connects the CO2 detector, attaches the PPV device, and hands it off to the operator. The assistant listens for an increasing heart rate and bilateral breath sounds and notes symmetrical chest movement. The assistant reminds the operator to check the CO2 detector for a color change to yellow within 8 to 10 assisted breaths. Now let's demonstrate steps of the intubation procedure itself. Adjust the height of the warmer or bend down to improve your view of the airway. Use your right index finger to gently open the baby's mouth. Hold the laryngoscope in your left hand. Insert the laryngoscope blade into the right side and slide the blade over the tongue toward the midline. Gently push the tongue toward the left and advance the blade until the tip lies just beyond the base of the tongue in the vallecula. Lift the laryngoscope and blade to expose the pharyngeal area. Raise your arm but do not bend or rotate your wrist. Your wrist should remain stable. When lifting the laryngoscope blade, do not pull the top of the handle or rock the blade, which may injure the baby's lips and gums. This clip shows the infant's airway during intubation using video laryngoscopy. The laryngoscope blade is at the top of the screen. Here the operator is looking for landmarks. An OG tube is in the esophagus at the bottom of the screen. The vocal cords appear. The top of the blade is in the vallecula. Now the tip of the blade lifts the epiglottis, exposing the open vocal cords. The operator advances the ET tube through the vocal cords, past the single black guide mark to the double guide mark on the tube. Carefully remove the laryngoscope. Hold the tube securely. Your assistant will remove the stylet, attach a CO2 detector and PPV device, and transfer the PPV device to you. Having the same person hold the tube and the PPV device helps avoid accidental extubation. The assistant checks tube placement by listening for a rising heart rate and noting color change on the CO2 detector within 8 to 10 breaths. Other indicators include bilateral breath sounds in the axilla and symmetrical chest movement. 
The nasal tragus length is one method for determining correct insertion depth. This can be done before or after intubation. Measure the distance from the baby's nasal septum to the ear tragus and add one centimeter. This baby's nasal tragus length is 10 centimeters. Add one centimeter for an insertion depth of about 11 centimeters. The 11 centimeter mark on the tube should be at this baby's lip. Secure the tube. If using tape, tear it so that it looks like a pair of pants. Place the uncut section on the baby's cheek close to the corner of the mouth and the upper leg of the tape above the baby's lip. Wrap the lower leg of tape around the tube. Leave a small tab of tape folded over at the end to assist removal. To prevent accidental dislodgement of the tube, the person providing PPV should hold the PPV device and the tube. The ET tube is held against the hard palate with the index finger. The third finger rests against the chin, and your thumb may rest on the baby's head. Here is the intubation process shown in real time. Note the roles of the intubator and the assistant, and how they work together as a team. Okay, Clara, we're going to intubate this baby. Is the equipment ready? Equipment's ready. All right. Can I get some suction? Suction. Thank you. Okay, cricoid pressure, please. Cricoid pressure. Good. I see the cords. Yeah. Get the endotracheal tube. All right. Looks like it's through the cords. Removing your stylet. Okay. Let's put on the CO2 detector. CO2 detector's in. All right, I'll take this. Can you listen for breath sounds? Listening for breath sounds in the axilla. I hear breath sounds on the left. I hear breath sounds on the right axilla. Okay, I see good chest rise, and I've missed in the tube, and I have color change. I hear heart rate, and it's rising steadily. And I hear good breath sounds on both the left and the right. This section of the video demonstrates use of the tracheal aspirator, also called a meconium aspirator. This infant required PPV for persistent bradycardia and apnea. The team has performed all of the Mr. Sopa steps. The peak inspiratory pressure is at the recommended maximum of 40 centimeters water, but there is still no chest movement with ventilation. The team suspects that the airway is obstructed with thick secretions. This team decides to first suction the ET tube with a suction catheter, but there is still no chest movement with ventilation. They decide to suction with the tracheal aspirator. Connect a meconium aspirator to a suction source set at 80 to 100 millimeters mercury. Connect the aspirator directly to the ET tube connector or to the integrated suction port if your ET tube is equipped. Occlude the suction control port on the aspirator with your finger and gradually withdraw the ET tube over three to five seconds. Resume face mask PPV or quickly reintubate. If chest movement is evident, Ventilate for 30 seconds and reassess the heart rate. If chest movement is not evident despite Mr. Sopa's steps, you must repeat tracheal suction until you have cleared the airway and achieved effective ventilation.